Welcome back to another episode of Swamp Stories. For this episode, we head back to LA. The past few episodes were just topics that I felt like making for my own enjoyment, but now we're back to the bangers. But before we get into it, make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you're new. You can also follow the Instagram page as well. So let's get into it. Long Beach, California. The last time I covered it, everyone was on my head about a few comments. First, I said that every house in Long Beach has a pool in the backyard. No, every house in Long Beach does not actually have a pool in the backyard. But the point was that Long Beach is a nice city that was built as a relaxing suburb. I mean, it's literally called Long Beach. And secondly, I said that Long Beach is not that dangerous. And this made everyone go completely insane. I would pull up the numbers, but people will still probably say that they're incorrect. If I say that a city is nice and safe, everyone says that I'm disrespecting their city. But then if I say their city is a dump like San Bernardino, everyone says I'm disrespectful as well. So let me just classify Long Beach as a city that is somewhere in between the disgustingness of San Bernardino and the beauty of Beverly Hills. Anyways, in the last video, we discussed the Rolling Twenties and the Longos as the most important and feared in Long Beach. But after doing some research and reading comments, I ran across a much more interesting dynamic. A topic that's brushed under the rug but does more numbers than Will Chamberlain and Too Short combined. But before we get into it, let me run the intro. this video to make sense, let's head all the way back to the start. Between 1967 and 1975, Cambodia underwent one of the worst battles in human history. Hundreds of thousands of casualties and unbelievable living conditions caused Cambodia to be completely unlivable. Imagine for 8 years straight, you can't do anything but fight for your life and for your family's safety. You can't meet up with your friends and go to the mall or take a mini vacation to Palm Springs. And the worst part is that you don't have time to think about good memories or have time to think about the future. All that matters to you is making it to the next day. And that was life in Cambodia for 8 straight years. There were children who actually knew nothing but chaos and survival for the first 8 years of their life. Then came 1975 when it all ended. The land was destroyed, so hundreds of thousands of Cambodians moved to America over the next 10 years. And they were directed to four different cities. First was Long Beach, then Stockton, then Oakland, and finally Lowell, Massachusetts. But for now we focus on Long Beach because that's where the biggest population moved to. In 1975, the east side of Long Beach had a major influx of Cambodian families. They came over with very little money and usually lived two to three families in one home. And some even say that 20 plus people were living inside a single house. So after a few years of working, they primarily opened donut shops, cafes, beauty salons, and traditional restaurants. And with these established businesses, the families wanted to provide structure for their kids to become doctors, lawyers, and engineers. And many kids did actually graduate college and succeed in life. However, many of them fell victim to the environment of the east side of Long Beach. The east side of Long Beach is split into different sections. You have the Rolling Twenties, Longo 13, Sons of Samoa, and finally the Baby Insanes. And all of these groups are territorial and willing to show their dominance by any means. So once these families arrived, they had to maneuver the neighborhood and going to school through all of these affiliations. And these groups were known to be awful to them, trying to punk them at every chance. And in response to this, there's always two routes. You either compromised your pride and focused on education, which is extremely difficult for a young man to do. Because in order to do this, you pretty much had to say fine. You can say whatever you want to me, but in 10 years, I'll be a doctor making 300k a year. And in retrospect, that was probably the best route to take. However, the other route was very understandable as well, but it had its consequences. Many of the teenagers were fed up and they decided that they had to assert their own dominance in Long Beach. And that's when they created TRG, also known as the Tiny Rascals. At first, they weren't taken very seriously because of their small stature and being new to the language. But little did these other groups know, these guys grew up in way worse environments than Stockton, San Bernardino, and Compton combined. 
These guys were absolutely fearless. So instantly, TRG and Longo 13 were bitter rivals, and the 1980s were reckless between the two. However, it only involved hands and maybe a Swiss army every once in a while. But everything changed on Halloween 1989. A group of Eastside Longos are parked on Cherry Avenue in Long Beach hanging out outside their car. That's when a car full of TRG pull right beside them with their gray rags out of the window. A 16-year-old Longo named Oswaldo advances towards the car. Bang! This moment changed Long Beach forever because it elevated a rivalry to new heights. Before this, it was really all showmanship and bare knuckles. But now, anything could happen at any time. During the next two years, over 10 people lost their life just between TRG and the East Side Longos. And according to the internet, TRG were the ones causing the damage, but actually it was not that simple. That's because the Longos were also dealing with their own internal rivalry at the same time. The East Side and West Side Longos Longos had a rivalry dating back a few decades, and TRG was making it impossible for them to handle both at the same time. So in 1992, La M ordered the East and West rivalry to end and for them to come together against TRG. So in response, TRG needed reinforcement as well, which came from two groups. First, let me introduce you to the Asian Boys, also known as ABZ. I previously covered them in a Stockton video, but that was like the G League version. ABZ in Long Beach is huge and controls a large portion of the East Side. Well, after ABZ joined their side, so did another unexpected group of guys. That would be the Insane Crips, also known as IGC. And because of this, the 1990s were absolute chaos between the Longos and the rest of Long Beach. The Longos outnumbered everyone severely, but they were also at a huge disadvantage. ABZ and TRG were still connected to the motherland, and they were able to receive shipments of all kinds of things. I'm talking about items that you would only see in GTA 5, but importing all of this was very expensive, so they had to come up with thousands of dollars quick. So starting in 1994, TRG became notorious for running in houses from Bakersfield all the way to San Bernardino. Wait, am I reading that correctly? What can you possibly take in San Bernardino? I heard they don't even have running water out there. Anyways, that strategy allowed them to have plenty of cash to purchase anything they wanted to use against the Longos. Well, after years of back and forth with the Longos, TRG began having its own internal issues with ABZ. There were always tensions between the two, but it officially fell apart around the year 2000. And that led ABZ to having their own separate identity, which came in the form of blue rags. ABZ was always really close with the insane, so it was only right that they joined the Crip family. Well, this decision to separate from TRG and join the Crips caused a lot of fear within the community. It ultimately led to a lot of families moving out of Long Beach. Most either went to Santa Ana, which is a quiet city in Orange County, or they went to Fresno, which is located a few hours north of LA. And finally, some switched coasts and moved all the way to Lowell, Massachusetts, where they stayed with long lost family members. And in all of these cities, ABZ and TRG began forming their new identities as well. But for now, let's focus on the ABZ in Long Beach. They now cover 13 by 22 blocks in the east side of Long Beach and are possibly the most feared in the city. And the rivalry with TRG got really serious in 2001. And shout out to Sergio Kwan, if you haven't seen his channel, he goes in depth in these stories as well. It's 2001 and TRG and ABC are not seeing eye to eye to the point where ABZ wants to send a message. And they have a perfect person in mind. That would be Ruel Hulbert, who's also known as Low Key. He is one of the few non-Cambodian TRGs, and because of that, he sticks out like a sore thumb. Well, on a random day around February 2001, Loki is at the Jackrabbit liquor store in Long Beach. That's when a group of ABZ pull up. Bang. Thankfully, Loki is okay, but this moment would change his life forever. You'll see what I mean. But TRG's initial response to the incident did not please him. They wanted to have a truce with ABZ before things get worse. And once Loki found out, he was not pleased at all. He wanted nothing to do with peace at all and went out and handled it himself. And it all occurred over a two week span. 
December 19th, 2003. Loki drives out to ABZ territory where he runs into a man named Daniel Chanta. Daniel himself is not ABZ, however he does associate with them. Well, Daniel has no clue who Loki is, so they agree to hang out later in the afternoon. So five hours pass and Loki comes back to meet up with Daniel. Loki walks up to him and says, hey, do you remember me? Bam. 11 days later, New Year's Eve 2003. Most people are having fun on New Year's Eve, maybe having a drink or two, but not Loki. He decides to drive around ABZ territory looking for people outside. And on East 14th Street, he spots a top ABZ man named Wood T. Buntong. Bang. Well, he is not done just yet. The next day on January 1st, 2004, he wants some more. So he drives around East 15th Street in Long Beach looking for more ABZ. He spots a corn fan right there in a Honda Civic. Bang. Well, four days later, Loki went down for everything, and this is where things get really interesting. In court, he cried the entire time and was a complete emotional disaster. And as bad as he was, it's really hard to not feel sorry for him. During the case, they went all the way back to his mother's childhood and how he was even conceived in the first place. They discussed how the same cycle repeated itself in his childhood. Now, I can't say everything that I want to share, but if you look up his name, you will be able to find the articles. Ultimately, we are all victims of our own emotions and Loki was no different. He ended up getting life, but regardless, the court sessions actually ended up bringing his family together. It was the first time that they had ever voiced the things they had been through. Well, after this, Long Beach kept getting worse and worse. However, a new rapper began bringing light to the area. That would be Stupid Young, but before he started rapping, he earned his stripes to become an ABZ. Rumors say that his dad was one of the original members and strongly tried to dissuade his son from joining, but he was in love with the lifestyle regardless. But at age 15, he went down for possession of a BAM machine, and he was sent to Camp Challenger, LA County's Juvenile Hall. And the judge gave him a deal. If he were to enroll in a music program called Flow, his sentence was reduced by two months. So that's where he began rapping. And in the program was another teenager named Daryl Caldwell, more famously known as Draco the Ruler. Rest in peace to the legend, we know the truth. Well, after years of rapping, Stupid Young blew up with hit songs like Mando, Trust Nobody, and plenty more. And many people were curious because, you know, for obvious reasons. Some thought it was parody and others thought he was just a fraud. But after a legendary No Jumper vlog, everyone was introduced to his life in ABZ. And it showed us where everything goes down, the 1300 block of Wesley Drive. This is a corner that connects ABZ's back alley to an open street putting them at a huge disadvantage. And that takes us to January 25th, 2017. Stupid Young's close friend, David Sevilla, also known as Dirt, sets up a meeting with a man from Compton. The Compton man wants to purchase some mud from him. So Dirt humor, tells humor. him to meet him in the back alley off the 1300 block of Wesley Drive. Well, the man shows up, but he actually isn't there to purchase anything. He wants a five finger discount. Well, Dirt has big pride and he is not going for it. So an argument breaks out. Bang. This was a random incident, but it just goes to show that living that life in LA is always a risk. However, the next incident is not so random, and that takes us to March 12th, 2018. ABZ are hanging out in their famous alley, and that's when two TRG men pull up. An argument follows, and the TRG men take it to another level. Bang. This incident was devastating for ABZ, and to make things worse, TRG was not done yet. And that takes us to Halloween 2019. ABZ decides to throw a Halloween party in their backyard on the east side. And the man officially Timmy Noy to the party and tells him to invite some friends. So Timmy invites a friend named Jeremy Penn. Unfortunately, this guy happens to be a top certified TRG. And as you know, that is absolutely off limits. But we can give Timmy the benefit of the doubt that he has no idea that he's easy. Well, after Timmy invites him, Jeremy gets really angry. He claims that he does not like whoever he rolls with. 
Well, Timmy thinks nothing of it and drops off Jeremy at home at 3 p.m. Then comes 10 p.m. Timmy is at the party in the backyard with dozens of people. Out of nowhere, Timmy gets a call from Jeremy, telling him to leave the party right now. Timmy responds why, and then Jeremy just hangs up. Instantly, Timmy gets paranoid and tells Daniel that he's scared. And because of this, everyone goes inside the home. Well, after about 20 minutes, Daniel's dad tells everyone that it's okay to go back outside. However, little do they know, Jeremy is on his way with seven friends behind him in three different cars. 10.20 p.m. The three cars full of TRG pull up to the back alley. Bam. This incident was solved a few days later and 8 people went down. And this is now known as the worst thing that TRG has ever facilitated. Also, let me be clear, this is not everything that's taken place. Obviously, way more has happened, this is just what has been documented. So don't say that I'm painting an unfair picture, I'm not gonna include things that aren't officially documented. TRG has taken a lot of losses as well, except I can't just pin it on ABZ. But what is documented is what ABZ has been doing to the Longos, which I can include in a separate episode. In fact, 13 members went down for it in February. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and maybe learned something new. Well, that's gonna do it for this episode of Swamp Stories. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you're new. Peace!